I am suing for yes. being scammed out of a dog. After I had sent her the money, she blocked me on everything. Heidi told us flat out that Alessandra wanted nothing further to do with us. Who the heck is Heidi? I think that she was uh, kind of incoherent and shouldn't have been driving. Pulled over to the bus and boom, oh. Now I'm taking him to the hospital. He didn't see me because of the bus. I am a single mom. I do all my stuff by myself. I'm literally just starting with my life. Plaintiff Alessandra Kohlberg claims the defendant swindled her out of $150 in a dog deal gone south. Defendant Cassie Paul claims she held up her end of the bargain and she doesn't owe anyone anything. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. I swear. Yes. Thank you. The Honorable Judge Jerry Springer now presiding. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Najee. This is case number 083 on the docket, Kohlberg versus Paul. Thank you. You're and welcome, Judge. Welcome to all of you. We have the plaintiff, Alessandra Kohlberg. You are suing the defendant, Cassie Paul. And with her is a witness, Matthew Johnson. And you are suing Cassie for $150 for a deposit on a dog. Alessandra, what is your case? Your Honor, I am suing for $150 for yes. being scammed out of a dog. Me and my fiance had started to look for dogs because we had just recently purchased a home. I had thought about Craigslist and I had found three different listings. The only one that ever replied to me was Cassie. For her ad, it was evidence number one the ad had listed it as a one-year-old German Shepherd Malmute mix for a $250. To okay. me, this seemed like a really good deal. Okay. And then she asked me if we were coming to pick him up. She had mentioned that there's this person that who was going to come up and pick him up that night. I told her I wouldn't be able to because I am two and a half hours away from the cities. And so she told me she'd contact me if the deal fell through. So she did mention to you that uh, there was another person interested in the dog as well? Yes. Okay, go ahead. She had called me telling me the deal had fall through because the person got a flat tire on their way there. And she asked me again if I could come get it that night. Told her I couldn't, but maybe my sister could, who lives in the cities, if I just wire my sister the money to give to her and she could keep the dog for a couple of days at her house. But then Cassie said, well, just wire us the money and we'll hold it for you till the weekend. And so I told her, we can do it through Facebook. And she said, that would be okay. You sent her the $150, right? That's where I sent her the $150, yes. Okay, let me hear now from Cassie. You receiving the $150, what happened next? Someone contacted us by the name of Heidi. We thought, well, I initially thought that that was her sister because she did not give me a name. So I was assuming that that was her sister. So I was like, yeah, come get the dog. She came and picked up the dog. Okay, let me interrupt and one second. Someone calls you and says her name is Heidi. She said that someone else had paid us for the dog. And the only one that had paid us was her. So I just gave the dog to her because I thought that the dog was in connection with, that she was And how much money sister. did this person give you? She didn't give us anything. Well, okay, time out. What I'm not understanding is you were selling the dog for $250, right? We received $150 from Alessandra through Facebook. Heidi said that somebody else had paid for the dog, and then we released the dog to the person that said that the dog was paid for for them. I never right. knew anyone named Heidi. At this point, you had only received $150, right? Correct. Because you just said that this Heidi didn't give you another 100 Why did you release this dog to this person that just came when she didn't have the remaining $100. Why she would you do that? She didn't have it, and I thought it was coming from her. Your Honor, if after I have sent her the money and told her that the 150 would be a deposit and that I would send her the, give her the rest when I went in on Saturday to go pick up the dog, she had blocked me on evidence three and two, saying you can no longer contact or see information from this person. Okay, if the plaintiff didn't send anyone named Heidi, she doesn't know anyone named Heidi. So if some woman shows up and says, I'm here to pick up the dog, 
How would this woman have any information that it was still either $100 that was owned? Is this just an absurd coincidence that someone out of the blue shows up to pick up a dog on a day that you were expecting someone from Alessandra to pick it up? You gave the dog to someone that has nothing to do with Alessandra. What happened after you gave Heidi the dog? She took the dog and left. You never received any more money? No. No, nothing. And she did not take any of the stuff that was supposed to go with the dog, nothing. I said, do you want the veterinarian paperwork? She said, nope, send it to me. I said, do you want the dog's microchip tag, the harness, or any of that stuff for Alessandra? <laughs> She CNN. said, nope. She goes, Alessandra won't need any of this stuff at all. So Heidi said this, and not Alessandra. No. So you're communicating with this other woman. Why did you block Alessandra on Facebook? Because we thought she Heidi, picked her, uh, that it was for her. And Heidi told us flat out that Alessandra, after the dog was picked up, wanted nothing further to do with us or anything because the dog was in their care afterwards. But they still owe you money. So we assumed that we were what? okay to block yeah, them because Yeah, it was we didn't the wrong want... person. Because there's the thing about the flat tire. We did Can give it to Can you show me the text where she says yes. this? Did we send him the wrong everybody. evidence? Yeah. She said something about, I will be there at 8.30 p.m. Sometimes people can't control right. what happens to them. I'm sorry, that is not right. You would have contacted says, me if you didn't block me, if you okay, had any questions on. about Heidi. It says here, you can come get him. The other one backed out. It's you were Heidi, communicating then. with not Alessandra. Alessandra's a little bit upset because you blocked her out. Why did you block her out? I still don't understand that. If she was already talking to you... we thought Heidi was in connection with her. Yeah, but you wouldn't block her sense. out yet. It was literally at the same time you all were negotiating the picking up of the dog, the bringing, the getting you the extra hundred dollars you still were entitled to because you wanted to sell the dog for two fifty. I'm telling you, you took her money. She paid $150, and you wind up giving the dog to someone else, and you blocked her out. So she had no way other than bringing a lawsuit, because she's thinking, hey, wait a second. You've got my 150 I can't even reach you now. I don't have the dog. She knows she didn't send anybody to get the dog. And you're blocking her, and you're giving the dog to someone else, and you're holding on to her 150 Otherwise, you wouldn't block her out because she still owed you $100. You just admitted to me that this woman that came to pick up the dog, Heidi, or whatever her real name is, she still owed you $100. So there's no way in the world you would block out Alessandra because you would want to make sure that you finally got your $100. I don't know what you guys were up to, but that is not fair to Alessandra. I find for the plaintiff $150. I first started thinking it was a scam was when she kept calling me repeatedly and being really persistent about getting the money. We verify who it's going to and who paid for it before we do anything like that, but we were told from Heidi not to have any further contact with Alessandra, therefore relinquishing the dog to her and never got paid at the rest of our money. Who the heck is Heidi? Plaintiff Avery Harden claims the defendant was driving illegally when she struck his car. He's suing for $5,000 for car damage. Defendant Maria Cardenas Rivera alleges the plaintiff was speeding through a hospital zone when he hit her. She says she owes nothing. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. This is case number 075 on the docket. Hardin versus Cardenas Rivera. Thank you. You're welcome, Judge. Just to let everybody know, um, I will be arriving at a virtual verdict today because even though Najee and I are here where we usually are in our court in Stamford, Connecticut, our plaintiff and defendant are in the beautiful, wonderful city of Minneapolis. I know when you're watching on television, you can swear we're all in the same room, but we're really 2,000 <laughs> miles apart. So, Avery, why don't you tell me now your side of the case? Okay, Judge Avery. Uh, first off, uh, I'd like to say that I think that she was uh, kind of incoherent and shouldn't have been driving because she do not have any uh, driver's license or insurance. How did the accident happen? And then, then we'll go to that. I was coming down 25th, going northbound on Chicago, 
Yes. And I was behind the bus. So the bus pulled over to the side to let some passengers out. So as yes. the bus pulled over to the side to let the passengers out, I proceeded on past the bus. I have no idea where she came from. We have video. Okay, okay. you're the, there's the bus That's and you're, whoa, you're the yellow car, right? Yes. Okay, so the bus pulls over to the bus stop there. You're going right. straight, you, you go by the bus. Let's run that again. Right. And there's, okay, okay, we do it. There goes, and boom, oh. Okay, so you're saying the defendant pulled out from, what is that, 25th Street? I don't know where she got well, around. Look, look as so, though she made a legal U-turn. Did you see her make a U-turn? Or could it have been that she was coming down what is East 25th Street there on your screen going from right to left and that she was making a left turn onto Chicago Avenue? No, because she said no. herself that she was making a U-turn. So let me hear from uh, Maria. Okay, so my point of view, you know, it's, it's uh, March 16th at about 11.35. I was running pretty late. I'm bringing my son to the hospital to get his surgery. He has a feeding tube in his stomach. I'm taking my son to the hospital. You know, I'm mm -hmm. driving down 25th because I didn't know if I was supposed to take him into the emergency exit or into the entrance on Chicago. So I took him to the emergency side. They said, no, I'm driving down 25th. I'm taking a left. I do not see nobody coming. I have my turn signal on. Yeah, he does have the right of way. But in the state of Minnesota, when you see a bus and they, have their, they, they stop, you're supposed to let the pedestrians who get off the bus walk out the bus and walk across the street. He didn't see me because of the bus. He didn't see me because of the bus. The bus was in his point of view. As you can see, and he's suing me for the damage just to his car. So okay. if you look at my car in um, example one to... and number one on the um, evidence sheet, that is my car when I am turning the corner. And, and number two no, on the thing on the is it's the right side. side. It is his passenger side. You got hit on the driver's side. Yeah, I did get my hit on my driver's, on side. driver's side. It looks like when I look at the pictures of both cars damage, the left side of the defendant's car, Maria, yours is the blue car, right? Correct, sir. So... Maria's car was a hit or hit your car, but her left side and the plaintiff's car was damaged a little bit in the front on the right side. With both of your stories, that's consistent. Whichever way it happened, the front right would have hit the front left of your car. In other words, there's no discrepancy there. The question is, who was at fault for the car's hitting? Minnesota is also a no-fault state. I so understand. No Hold on. That's in the winter. That's Hold in the on. winter time, winter season. Incorrect. No. Okay. Minnesota does have a no fault law, but the no mm. fault means that when there's an accident, each person's insurance company takes care of it, but only takes care of personal injury, not damage to the vehicle. And since this claim doesn't have to do with personal injury, no fault doesn't apply. In terms of collecting for damages to the vehicle, we're back to the question initially of who is responsible for the accident. What speaks to the plaintiff's side of the case, the defendant had a stop sign. The plaintiff had the right of way. So not even talking about whether or not a bus was there, and I admit a bus could impair the the vision of both of you. So that doesn't cut in either person's way. When there is a stop sign, the responsibility of the person who has to stop is not to proceed in the intersection until you are personally sure, based on what you can see, that there is no car coming. And that would put more of the responsibility on you, Maria, because he didn't have a stop sign, and you did. Now you can say what you want. But um, he came around the bus, sir. Uh, the bus was in my view. I had seen the bus, and I had seen the bus was stopping. And what I'm told, you know, when the city bus has their lights on in the back, you know, their, uh, their emergency lights, you know, you're supposed to stop, you know, let the pedestrians get off the bus, and then you can go around the bus. Is what, I, you know, that's, that's my understanding. 
And so I didn't think that somebody was going to be flying. It, look, the speed limit right there is only 25, 20 because of the hospitals right there. That's the children's hospital. You know, I didn't yeah. think somebody was going to be going 40 or whatever he was going down the down the road and hit my car that hard to cause that much damage. How she know? Look, how he wants me to pay for his damages to his car. What does he want me to pay for his light? Because that's all that I see wrong. Look. I am a single mom. I do all my stuff by myself. I'm only 20 years old. I'm literally just starting with my life. I, my son has problems eating. Yeah, well, my son doesn't know how to do any of that. Too. You know, like he's just now learning. And I'm taking him to the hospital. And I, you know, like there's already a lot going on in my mind that day. Maria, how is your son doing now? He's doing great right now. Thank you. Okay. Well, good for that. That's probably more important than anything. Okay, back to the case now. Your Honor, can I show you the damage to my car? Yes. Exhibit one. Now you can see where all of this is just torn or loose. The bumper. I'm looking at all the pictures now, so I see that. May I now see what the estimates are of what the damage is? I have an estimate of um, $4,139. where is that? Um, oh, that is on item uh, 13. 13. Sounds like you were very okay. angry that you were behind the city bus and that you tried to rush around it. And then you had hit me going full speed, which you weren't, weren't supposed to be doing. And my car is more damaged than yours. My car is not even working anymore. You watched me tow my car home. Maybe that's something got to do with your car. Not no, the because I had bought my car just a few weeks earlier. What kind of car you bought? Right? It, that doesn't have nothing with you speeding and hitting me. I will say that there is a legal theory called comparative negligence where when there is an accident, for example, the judge or in cases where there's a jury are entitled to consider the fact that both parties might have had some degree of ne negligence, one more than the other, one with a higher responsibility than another. What I see here is, Maria, you had the major responsibility because you were entering a intersection after having stopped Correct. at a stop sign. On the other hand, Avery, knowing that you're around a hospital, knowing that you're around a stopped bus where people get off, and people don't always pay attention, they just suddenly get off the bus and then try to run across the street, knowing that there could be activity going on, that should increase the caution. Where I find the defendant primarily responsible, I find a little bit of responsibility on behalf of the plaintiff as well because some responsibility would be yours. I am finding for the plaintiff in the sum of $4,000. My car is not nothing to play with. They are dangerous people. The way I was brought up is not to disrespect my elders, and the gentleman who was suing me was also an elder, so I couldn't just interrupt him and say what I wanted to say. Hey, YouTube, thanks for watching. For more Judge Jerry, click here. For more Jerry Springer, click here.